Hey everybody, we're going to do a quick, uh, I don't know how quick, we're going to do a video doing quick segments of starting fire. Fire! Uh, we're going to go over a bunch of different stuff in this, just uh, kind of all the sources we have with us currently. We're going to do the initial steps. So adding fire and stuff to this later, we're, we're not going into that. We're going into how we're going to get the tinder bundle going or how we're going to use this specific thing to get the fire going, that kind of stuff. We're not going to show adding a bunch of different stuff to get the actual fire itself going. We're just going to show the baby steps, really the hardest part. Once you get a little bit of fire going, it's easy from there. So we're just going to go over the, uh, the harder steps, if you will. All right, so first things first, we're going to show you the things that you should have. Now, flint and steel and all that is fine and dandy. It's cool, but in a real situation, you should have things that really improve your odds and that yes encompasses lighters and matches um, all of these other things should be things that you definitely learn because you might not always have these in certain situations so if you know you can make a fire with a bow drill or really primitive means you've got that in your arsenal but that shouldn't be your go-to your go-to should be the stuff that makes it as easy as possible a lighter doesn't take any calories to light a fire this way. It takes very few. It takes a lot less than having to build a bow drill and then use all the energy to get it going. So this should be in your pack. This should be the go-to stuff. Not a bow drill, nothing like that. The bow drill should definitely be stuff to learn because the situation may warrant its use. But it's not what you should rely on. This is what you should rely on, the easiest stuff possible. So that's the stuff we're gonna go over first. All right, so in the easy world, I think there's ways to improve that. So this, to a degree, is limited. You've only got so much of that fuel in there. Fatwood. Fatwood is your friend. It's your best friend. Uh, next to charred material, this is uh, just absolute must have. So I'm gonna get a few shavings of this off. So, Fat wood alone is going to help. I can take my lighter, I can easily get that fat wood going. Now that's what I use to get my fire going. Not my lighter, my lighter's done now. If you don't have the fat wood, before you go, there are things that you can make. We showed a video on these. This is just 100% cotton canvas dipped in wax. This is now what I'm going to use to make my fire, not my lighter this that's going to get my other sources going okay good thing about this one you can put it out it's ready to be used again multiple fires from the same one there's also the cotton balls this is a cotton ball that's been soaked in wax we can get this guy going and now that is our means of lighting our fire we're going to come in here and use it to get our other materials going and we're setting the lighter aside we're not wasting it same thing if we're using matches we can use these other sources of ignition and save these next thing we have is a tinder tube I'm going to have a video on this really soon tinder tubes the same thing this is something that we can get going to, to make our fire we can now save our lighter this is just uh, cotton rope dipped in wax so the way we think about this it's like the food chain this gets this going and then this gets this going and then both of these are set aside and being basically just babied to a degree we want to save them as much as possible this is the one we want to save the most and then this one gives us a little more time and then this one gives us a lot more time because we can find more of this in the wild so it's like the food chain this gets this and then this gets this these are set aside and we'll work with the fat wood. So bringing modern convenience is great, but on the same token, you gotta know how to find this kind of stuff and utilize it to your advantage as well. Next on the equation of your best friend, this kit's got a few different things in it. I've got some jute, some heavy jute, a piece of uh, fat wood, a little birch bark separator, but underneath all that, char cloth. Now, char cloth is fantastic 
That being said, you don't always have the luxury of cotton fabric. So there's other things you can char. There's grasses you can char, there's punk wood, there's all kinds of things that if you can starve it of oxygen and burn it, it will char and it'll catch a really, really easy spark. So for our tinder bundles today, we're using jute twine or bird's nests. Um, same, the, it's the same principle as finding something wild, whether that be like uh, poplar bark or grasses or something like that. Same steps, we're just using this today. All the steps that we're using here would be the same, provided you have a proper bird's nest, which is going to be nice, fibery, wispy materials that easily work up and fluff up. All the steps will be the same. Just because we're using jute does not mean that this is any different than if we were using barks or really dry grasses. So let's start out with ferro rod. I'm going to get us some uh, pieces of fat wood ready here. This is our kind of uh, beefier fuel source, so to speak. After we get that bird's nest going, this is what it gets fed with. So right here I just have a hacksaw blade that I've attached to my ferrous rod so I don't ever lose it. And we need that 90 degree corner to cast that spark. You can also do it with the back of your knife if you have a nice clean 90 degree angle on that back of the knife. All right, so let's get our bird's nest going. We're just gonna hit it with a stroke or two. There we go, we got it going. Now I'll add that fat wood to help extend the length of its burn. Now that we got that fat wood going, it'll burn for a while and we can start adding more and more substantial sources of fuel. If we were to step up, it would be this size stuff next. Still really small, really Smaller dry. Smaller than a pencil. Really dry stuff. And then from that, go a little bit bigger than a pencil. Once you get to the point where you're getting sticks on there bigger than a pencil, you're good to go. You can start adding bigger and bigger stuff slowly. Slowly is key. Most of this original bird's nest is burnt up fairly quickly. And now we're burning this extra fatwood fuel, and that's what's going to extend the length of this flame. We call this an extender or an additive because it extends that original flame. Now one thing I want to point out with the ferro rod, we're probably going to do flint and steel next. There's a huge difference there. This puts off sparks up into the 3000 degree range. This had no charred materials, it was just dry materials that he got going. That's because this gives off a lot of really, really hot sparks. When we switch up to flint and steel, we're giving off sparks that are between five to 600 degrees. That's a huge difference. So if you're gonna sit here with this bird's nest, try to get sparks into it and get it going, good luck. At the end of the day, you're going to be cold because it just does not give off the heat like a ferro rod. So with the flint and steel, we gotta bring in the charred material, whether that be charred punk wood, uh, char cloth, whatever. So that's the big difference between these two. They seem the same, they both give off sparks, but they are not created equal. Actually something recent that came out that highlighted that pretty well, if you all saw the movie The Revenant, the scene where he's cauterizing his neck and he's trying to get that little bundle going with the flint and steel, he finally pours black powder onto it to make it take off. That was actually a really common practice and it shows that just trying to get this stuff going with flint and steel, it's it's not really reality. You need that charred material. All right, so I'm getting things ready now. I'm getting in my little tin here. Get me a piece of char. So this is charred denim. This is good thick stuff. I like this because it gives a good long burn time. All right, in terms of technique, I'm not gonna go over it too much because we have a video that will show you how to get good sparks with your flint and your steel. So I'm not gonna go over this technique too much. I can put a link in the description to that video if you need to learn proper technique. We're just gonna show you how we would make a fire doing this. So again, that first step, that kind of crucial step, is our char cloth. What I generally do is fold that over if it rips, no big deal. That's actually a good thing because that's going to give us some good jagged edges that really takes a spark well. 
All right, that's gonna set right up on top of our uh, flint. And then when we hit with our steel, it's gonna force sparks back into it to get things rolling. So one reoccurring theme there, you might see, I've already done it. I took a piece of that fat wood, prepped it down into small stuff. Because we always have to have something to feed in to that bird's nest to keep things going. So this needs to be on standby. Now I'm just going to strike into this. That corner's already gone. One strike. Now I'll just fold this guy over. And it's going to go right into the center. It's bird's nest. Boom. Get that guy down there. Get our fat wood in there. There we go. That one piece of fat wood gone. Game changer. Again, once we have that going, we can start adding a little bit more substantial sticks, a little bit more fat wood to make sure we can keep it going. So the big takeaway that I hope you take from this was the really, really minimal amount of resources we use. That was a really small bird nest, very little fat wood, and I'm 100% comfortable with getting a full-fledged fire going off this little pile of material. That's more than enough. So that was a bird nest, I don't know what, silver dollar size and about, about yay thick and a few little slivers of fat wood and we can get a, a rip-roaring monster fire going off just this as long as we can do the baby steps and keep stepping up. So very little materials to get that fire going. All right, going along with some of those uh, materials that you can bring with you. So this is a ranger band, which we have a video on. Um, it's just a cut piece of inner tube. You can see I had it holding my uh, tin of chart cloth closed there. These are really, really handy to have. And on top of that, they're also a good fire starter. So this is another one of those things that you can help save your primary ignition source by getting that going. These burn really hot and for a long time. It'd be the same principle here. We just keep feeding this with some fat wood or we could use it to get our fat wood going. So always be thinking about your next fire. When you're making your first fire, follow those principles of going from really small to big and make sure it's all dry. Use the techniques we just showed you. It's not that hard to do. Uh, be on the lookout for some other videos. We'll have a bow drill coming up soon. We might explore some other kind of primitive options. So. The little structure that we're in here, our little tarp tent, uh, we did a video on how to make these. We're going to do a series of them actually. The one that we just put up is the uh, kind of intro, the easiest structures that you can make. So if you want to see how to make those, we'll have a link in the description showing you how to do that. Super easy to do, minimal materials, and they can save your life. Just like this fire, this can save your life as well. But we're going to have videos coming up showing different natural uh, structures you can make also so a lot to come stay tuned thank you all for stopping by uh, please like and sub subscribe any questions or anything hit us up in the comments peace